How y'all doing? Today is November the 20th, 2022. It is a Sunday morning. And this segment is relevant. It's relevant to me, at least. Now, I'm going to try and explain, you know, why I feel some people have lost their connection with Jesus and God. Now, I'm not an expert in this department. Um, I know my, I know the Bible, but I don't know the Bible, if that makes sense. I've never actually grabbed the, you know, grabbed the Bible, sat down and, you know, read it front to back. I just, I, I basically worship Jesus and God in my own way. I am a Christian, and yeah, I am a believer of, of, of the fact that God and Jesus exist. I am a believer that God sent his son Jesus Christ to die for all our sins. I am a strong believer of that. But I just really feel that today's society has lost that connection with Jesus and God. I, I feel that it's more, you know, negativity that's being embraced. I feel that more people is like looking at negativity as how ironic a, a positive, positive, positive movement. Like, oh, the way the way to life now is just to be negative at all times. And if you're if you think negative, you you'll get you know you'll get better results. And for me, that's 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 I, I mean I don't even see how that's logic thinking. Because why would you think negative? Think you're going to get better results out of it? If 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 I can recall, anger breeds damage and loss. So for me, anytime you're being negative, I would like to think that also breeds damage and loss too. You can't. I mean, what you think is what you're going to put out. I, the law of attraction. Yeah, I I do think. You know, I do. Um, utilize that the best of my ability too. So I, I just feel that anytime you think negative, you're going to get negative results, bad results. You're not going to get good results. So, like I said, in my opinion, and I, I mean, no, this is not even my opinion. This is how I feel. I feel that negativity in today's society is being explored at a high rate like literally it's like oh if you you know if you get on social media and you know always print or always take a selfie or always talk about someone's you know a celebrity's lifestyle or you know every minute you're always putting something on social media about this how this guy is living his life or every little thing he's doing or her every little thing he or she is doing oh it's like oh my goodness it's, it's like wow yes this is a shock value oh I want my life to be like that I want to every minute you know people to you know let everybody know how I'm living my life and I can recall a time where you know most people wanted their life to be private like why would you want somebody to know you're on vacation with your girlfriend or your wife or vice versa. Why would you want everyone to know you're on vacation with your boyfriend or your husband or even the fa your family? You know, the, the uh, kids, you know, grand, you know, mother, mother-in-law and so forth. Why would you want the, you know, society to know this is what y'all doing? Like, I don't know how that's a positive I don't know how that's that's a positive look for people I don't I don't get I never got that and I never will that's how come I don't conform to most things in today's society because I just feel that it's not you know it's it's not connecting 
with Jesus and God. I, I feel that there's more of that being placed on social media than, you know, Bible verses encouraging people to be, you know, the good, just people encouraging people to be good to each other, period. I don't see any, you know, programs that, and I'm pretty sure there's programs out there. I'm not saying there's not programs out there that teaches us the word and teaches us that God and Jesus is real and how, you know, their love for us is the reason why we're still here today as a society. Like, we've been blessed with so many gifts from Jesus and God till it's it's just unimaginable. And I don't even think we even tapped in to those gifts. But for me, I really feel that there's not enough programs that teaches us about Jesus and God. It doesn't teach us that, you know, the true meaning of Christmas, for example. It doesn't teach us the, you know, the, the, the reason why we should have faith and know that God and Jesus exist. It doesn't, I just feel it doesn't teach us all that like it used to when I was growing up. Growing up, I would watch movies that always, for the most part, teach you, always had a message about Jesus and God, you know, being real and, and so forth, the lessons, the, 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 um, the, the times where things were so tough and how, you know, families would, you know, go through the turmoil of what's going on and then at the end of it all, they persevered because there was always that one family member, whether it was the uncle, the brother, the father, or the mother, grandmother, cousin, and so forth, will always be the one to have that strong faith in God and Jesus. And then at the end of it all, God and Jesus blessed them at the right time. Like the old saying goes, God may not come when you ask him to come, but he's always right on time. Yes, he is. He's always right on time. I can't even count how many times I've been blessed. I can't even count how many times I didn't dance with death. And I always walked away asking myself a question. How did I get out of that? And the answer was simple for me. God and Jesus. Now, I just really think that we need to get more back to what it was like growing up as a family. I know things are out of place now. I know things are, you know, foreign to some people because of technology, because of social media and so forth. But I just really believe that there's a reason for that. And you have to also remember the devil was busy too. The devil was out here recruiting his soldiers too. So you got to always, you know, as a Christian, remember that the devil is busy too. You got to fight the devil off every day of your life. As, as, you know, for every day God blesses you with the gift of life. For every day Jesus, you know, blesses you with the gift of life. For him to die on the cross for our sins, that's him giving us the greatest gift of all, which is life, which is forgiveness. But you still have to remember the devil was busy. The devil was recruiting the soldiers too. So you have to be aware of that. So I think what's going on out here is the devil's work. So again, you have to be aware of that though, as a Christian. And yeah, for me as a Christian, I am aware of that. And yeah, there, there's times where it's hard. There's times where I battle. There's times where I doubt. There's times where I just want to, you know, give up and just, you know, just not, you know, not give up, but in a sense, just give up and just, you know, conform to what's going on in today's society. But I always come back to the 
realization that there is a God, there is that there, 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 Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Yes, God sent him, his father, to die for our sins because he knew we was going to sin. He knew it was going to happen. So I always come back to the realization that there, yeah, Jesus, which was created, I mean, that God sent him to earth to die for our sins. I always come to the realization of that. And I always come to the realization that God is real. Like, like, what's this? The, the, uh, it, it's, it's John chapter 3, verse 16. And it reads, For God so loved the world, he sent his one and only begotten son, so that we would not perish, but but so that, so, so, with, for, 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 for God so loved the world, he sent his one and only begotten son. So so whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Everlasting eternal life. I'm sorry. Everlasting eternal life. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I read that right, but I think I got most of it right. But... That's one verse that I, you know, that I know, that I, that I know of. Um, and if you take that verse, I'm pretty sure most people know the verse. So, yeah, if you take that verse and look at it in its entirety, yeah, that's exactly what it's saying. God loved the world. He loved us so much that he sent his one and only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins. That's how much God loved, loves us as, as, as the human race. And also God loved us so much that he did not want us to be walking around here like mindless robots obeying his every command. So he also gave us the gift of having free will, which is, if you're going to follow me, you're going to do it from your heart. It's your decision to follow me. I would prefer if you follow me, but it's your decision at the end of the day. And, yeah, it, you can say it's a gift and a curse because I guess you could say the world would be up in a much better place if God didn't grant us that gift the ability to have free will but at the end of the day it's a it, it's a gift because why would you want to make somebody do something if it's not coming from their heart if that makes sense so um basically for me I I really believe society we need to, and I'm not saying we, I keep saying that word we. I'm going to say, society, I just believe some people in society need to, um, um, need to acclimate that connection with Jesus and God into their life. I, I, I really believe that if these people did that society would be a much better place because I believe that's what's going on I believe that you know it's so much going on it's so many people looking for instant gratification it's so many people you know searching for you know uh, happiness and love from certain material things on this on, on this on, on, on earth and they thinking if they obtain these material things and we, we are I'm not even gonna mention money we already know what that is but at the end of the day that does not bring you true love and happiness love true love and happiness comes from the heart true love and happiness comes from not gifts and, and material items. It does not come from that. True love comes from the heart. It comes from the heart. It is genuine. 
like for example a simple happy birthday would, would, would be cool with me was I ever caught up in material things and am I still to this day caught up in material things I would say to a certain extent I am but at the same time I'm learning that it's better to get love and happiness from the heart it's better if it's genuine when a person just says happy birthday to me or a family member calls or a family member texts you or you know someone just checking on you making sure everything's okay with you or you know you're walking down the street and you know someone says hi to you all this stuff go a long way I, I think a lot of people don't realize that when these things take place it goes a long way just a person saying hi to someone on the street that could make their whole entire day like it can put them in a mood to where it makes them think that day somebody actually cares about me somebody actually cares enough to say hi to me I ain't had one person say hi to me all day long and I walked by this person and he said hi so yeah Believe it or not, people, you, and, and I don't care how people or should I say social media or society tries to twist this, the fact that human connection is, is not all that relevant when, yeah, actually it is relevant. I mean, you can keep coming up with these um, devices and, you know, you know, um, inventions on how to create human connection on a more artificial level. You can come up with things like that all day, every day, but it would never replace actual human connection. Actual human connection was created through God and Jesus died for our sins in order for us to have that. In order for us to experience it. In order for us to learn as the human, as a human race to learn how to better be a, 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 a solid and um, more of a loving, caring society. A society, I mean, a, 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 a race also. So, I don't care how, how much, you know, these scientists, geniuses, whatever you want to call them, I don't care how much they try to find ways to replace actual human connection, it would never be replaced because it's a God-given gift. That's why it'll never be replaced. You can't never replace what God created. God created a man and a woman to have that type of human connection. Not only with themselves, but have that connection with God and Jesus also. That's what it was intended for. What's going on out here now is just, you know, it's, it's just all over the place right now. Now, am I hopeful? Will it get better? I mean... Me personally, I can't answer that question. I used to say, no, it's not going to get any better, but now I'm getting older. I'm 49 years old, and my thinking is, is, is it's evolving. And the way I thought five years ago is not the way I think today. And I would not, if I was to answer that question, I would just say I don't have an answer for it because I just don't know what God and Jesus have in store for us. I don't know his plan. And, but for me, whatever that plan is, if it's his will, it's his will. That's how I've always looked at it. As far as in for me, my life, and you know, my family's life, and anybody else's life. I just looked at it like, if it's his will, it's his will. And I've always put it in God and Jesus' hand. Whatever I do in life, Whatever I did in life in the past, or whatever I do in life going forward, as long as God and Jesus continue to bless me to get the life, I will always put it in their hands. Because at the end of the day, you got to trust that they have a bigger plan for you know what's going on out here. They have a bigger plan for me, you, your family, you know anybody, any anybody on this planet. That God and Jesus has a bigger plan for us. So basically, for me. I will always keep my, I will always have faith in God and Jesus. I will always realize the fact that God and Jesus is real. I will always realize the fact that God sent his son to die for our sins. I will always 
will try my best to love and appreciate what God had his son do for us. I will always try and love and appreciate the both of them for blessing me with the gift of life, for blessing me and my family with the gift of life, for blessing us with the overall good life that we've, we've had as a family. And I will always pray for others, and I will always ask God and Jesus to give the many blessings he has given me and just give them to somebody who, who deserves them more than I could ever imagine. Because at the end of the day, I really feel that I've been blessed enough in my life to where, I, I mean, and I, know, I know God and Jesus are going to continue to bless me, but me personally, I think I've been blessed enough to where I could just, you know, sit back and try to enjoy, you know, joy life that God and Jesus decides to keep blessing me with. I feel I can sit back and enjoy it and just, you know, continuously ask God and Jesus to give the blessings to someone who deserves them more. Because, yet, yeah, in my heart, I care about people, yet, yeah, do I have issues sometimes? Do I do a lot of, you know, stuff that's not pleasant at times? Of, of course, I'm human. I'm going to make mistakes. But for the most part, I love people. I, I don't like seeing people suffer. When I see someone suffer, it depresses me. And I, you know, and I always wish that God would have blessed me with the power to help people. You know, like and I'm talking about literally help people. And but at the end of the day, yeah, if God would have blessed me with that gift, then I would literally be helping people out there. But I didn't get blessed with that gift. So um, I do what I can to help people. That's how I do it. The, 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 the little gift that God gave me, the ability to help people, I try to, you know, help people the best of my ability. So for me, I will always continue to pray and ask for God Jesus to make my faith strong in him and his son. I will always continue to look at, you know, life, and I will always continue to look at, you know, the fact that, you know, we wouldn't be here without Jesus and God. And I will always look at the fact that we need to get back to that connection. There's that word we again. Some people need to get back to that connection. That connection with Jesus and God. Now, whether you want to go to church or you want to choose to worship God and Jesus you know, in your own way, that's fine. That's how I do it. I worship God and Jesus in my own way. So, but also, we all say, let's just put it out there. Nobody's better than nobody. So, I, we need to stop thinking like that, too. Yeah, I mean, there's times I do it, too. And I'm pretty sure, now I think I can use that word, we, because I'm pretty sure people do this. We as, we as the human race do this. But it still don't make it right that when you think this way it still don't make it right so we need to just get back to learning the word learning God and Jesus we need to know and realize that they are real this is not a fantasy this is not no fabrication of 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 oh God and Jesus didn't create this world or God didn't create the world and he didn't send his son Jesus Christ to die for us. That's not a fabrication. That is indeed a fact that God and Jesus is real. And we need to get back to that. We need to get back to having faith in that, knowing that it's real. We need to quit with all this other silly stuff out here. We need to stop with the negativity. We need to stop being ignorant and stupid. Well, well, I can still say, well, I'm sorry. We need to stop being ignorant and stupid and realize and start using common sense. That's another gift God bless us with, common sense. We need to also use that and realize that, hey, what we are doing is wrong. It's not cool. It is not cool to talk about people. Whatever, whatever, whatever these people choose, to, however they choose to live their life, it still don't give us the right to say that what they're doing is wrong. It's their life. As long as they're not out here hurting people, it is their life. 
they are entitled to live their life the way they see fit. That life was given to them by God and Jesus, not you. So it is their life. If they choose to live in a certain way, let them live in a certain way. As long as they're not out here hurting people. That's what matters. If they're hurting people, then you can, you know, they can suffer the proper consequences for it. But as long as they're not hurting people, leave them alone. Let them live their life the way they want to live it. And another thing, as long as they're not trying to force it on people, their lifestyle on other people, let them live their life the way they want to live it. This is that simple. None of us is better than nobody. We all sin alike. No sin is bigger than no, no sin. A sin is a sin. Always remember that. A sin is a sin. So, yeah, we need to get back to learning about God, realizing he's real, him and his son, Jesus Christ. We need to learn how to love and appreciate them more. We need to come together as a human race of love and care for each other more also we need to stop this ridiculous bickering this ridiculous oh I'm, I'm smarter than you or oh my life is so much better than yours or I got more I got so much money this and that this and that look at the end of the day it does not bring happiness none of this stuff don't bring happiness it doesn't it does not give you happiness, it does not give you love. Only God and Jesus, well, first and foremost, God and Jesus is the one that loves us. God and Jesus is the one who can grant us true happiness and love if we pray and if we start doing the things to show God and Jesus. This is what we want at the end of the day. Money can't give us that. Sex can't give us that. Uh, uh, hanging out with a whole bunch of people can't give you that they don't care about you Th that, none of this stuff material things none of these things can give you true love and happiness only God and Jesus can give you true happiness and love if you ask for it if you pray for it if you do the things that's, that's, that's necessary to obtain true love and happiness that only God and Jesus can give you they are the only ones to give you that but you have to ask for it you have to do the things that's that's necessary to obtain it, to obtain it. God knows your heart at the end of the day. Jesus and God know your heart. And with that, I'm going to leave it at that. But again, that's just you know, I you know, like I said, I'm not a scholar. I'm not a super intellectual type of man. I'm just you know, I try to do my best to put things in my own words in order to. You know, express how I feel about certain things that's going on in today's society, and I think this is the main thing that's going on in today's society is is the fact that you know some some people have lost that connection with God and Jesus, and they need to start doing the things to obtain to restore that connection in order for society to be in a much better place. So with that. Y'all take care. Y'all enjoy yourselves. It's a Sunday morning, Sunday day. Please enjoy it. Um, be safe out there. It's cold, so stay warm. DJ Lottie Dottie, you and your families, y'all be blessed. Y'all be safe. Y'all have a nice holiday. One love. Later.